Well, I have lots of thoughts on it. First off is I don't remember Joe Biden campaigning on this. He campaigned on a platform that he said he was going to be moderate. He was going to work in a bipartisan manner. And then he turns around. He wants to legalize uh, hundreds of thousands uh, of illegal aliens. And remember, I, I'm not begrudging anybody U.S. citizenship, but these individuals did not follow the course of action that others that others have followed. Uh, what, what about the person that's from places like Eastern Europe or elsewhere that have waited in line, have done everything right, have paid literally thousands of dollars, have gone to countless hearings before immigration judges? What about those individuals? Uh, if we want to fix our immigration system, we should do it holistically. But rewarding and fast-tracking people who their first action here was literally breaking our law, that's problematic. Additionally, Sean, this is reckless, and let me explain that. These caravans that you're seeing coming from Central America are incredibly dangerous. We have intel on this that uh, there's many sexual assaults, child, uh, children are exploited. It's incredibly dangerous. It's run by coyotes in the drug cartels, not people you'd like to uh, trust with your lives or your, or, or your safety. And by taking this reckless action, Joe Biden is actually encouraging more individuals to take that dangerous track and to open themselves to be exploited or assaulted. That That is a problem, and people are going to have real consequences with that. So, so there's so many thoughts on this, but we can find a common uh, – we can find a common ground here, but but threatening to do this in a partisan ma manner and to do it so quickly after campaign where this wasn't discussed at, at all shows that Joe Biden is beholden to the far left of his party. Labor Department reporting this morning that uh, the jobless numbers are up 13,000. Uh, just came out this morning, 861,000 without jobs uh, just filed, four, four and a half million unemployed still in our country. I bring that up because a part of this immigration bill talks about $4 billion going to Central America to set up uh, some structure, I believe, into getting into America when millions of Americans are out of work. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the Democrats clearly don't care about the economy. You can see that when they're starting to talk about $15 minimum wage, which would right off the bat kill 1.2 million jobs. Also, why are they not focused on programs like E-Verify, where employers have to verify that the person is a citizen? That would go a long way to, one, make sure the people that are getting jobs are uh, citizens or those that are here through legal means. And it would discourage individuals from making this dangerous track from Central and in, in Latin America uh, to our southern border. So those are just a few thoughts. But again, Joe Biden did not campaign on these issues. He said he was going to be a centrist. In day number one, with those 40-some executive orders, he's shown us that he does not care about working with Congress. He does not care about working with Republicans across the aisle. And he certainly is, he does not care about centrist policies. He is craning for a far-left radical agenda. I want to ask you about this. Well, I have you. The Biden administration uh, is getting accused of sending mixed messages on when the country might get back to normal through this pandemic. Uh, here's what President Biden said at his uh, town hall meeting. By next Christmas, I think we'll be in a very different circumstance, God willing, than we are today. Uh, next Christmas, uh, you get mixed messages about that. The bottom line is, uh, do you agree with that comment? What are your thoughts? Yeah, lots of thoughts. For one, Joe Biden and Fauci, for example, have changed and moved the goalposts repeatedly. Remember, this was all about flattening the curve at the beginning, making sure our hospitals were not overwhelmed to make sure we had enough ventilators, enough beds. Well, we flattened the curve. And now it is transcended to uh, exerting control over the American people. It's about being uh, punitive on small businesses that are perceived as being right-leaning and not, not, not left-leaning. And if you go back to the so-called experts, Dr. Fauci has been wrong numerous times, and the mainstream media has said nothing about it. Remember, he's the one that at the beginning of this said, this is a problem for China. We in the United States have nothing to worry about. And when it looked like this was going to be a problem, Dr. Fauci was criticizing President Trump for making sure people from China and Europe did not travel to the United States to bring the virus here. Dr. Fauci was wrong on that. He later said that that action by President Trump literally saved lives, yet he was wrong. Then he lied to Congress. I was on a conference call with him where he said that masks don't work, blatantly lied. Then months later or weeks later, he, he admitted to lying, saying that, well, he was trying to uh, store uh, PPE for uh, for hospitals. Well, well, why would you lie to a bunch of people? The American people are smart enough to know that, hey, we, if we have to save these for medical workers, we're going to do it. But he lied about that. 
Then he's completely moved the goalposts on schools openings, on vaccines, how many we need. Been wrong the entire time. So we should not trust Joe Biden when he plays politics with the science. Now, final thoughts on this. Um, Biden's comments on China after he refused to criticize China over its human rights violations. Here's that sound. I'm not going to speak out against what he's doing in Hong Kong, what he's doing with the Uyghurs in western mountains of, of uh, China and Taiwan trying to end the one China policy by making it forceful. I, I said, and by the way, he said he, he gets it. Culturally, there are different norms. Congressman, shouldn't a president speak out on genocide? Shouldn't a president speak out on human rights violations and what we've heard and, uh, about what's happening to the Uyghur population? Yeah, it's absolutely disgusting that, it, that an American president would refuse to call out China when China has uh, engaged in a modern-day genocide, when they have concentration camps set up Again, to use against their Muslim minority population. And the fact that Joe Biden turns around and says that it's, it's because of cultural norms, where it's completely unacceptable. Uh, and we should not give China a pass for their human rights uh, violations and atroc atrocities. Additionally, when Joe Biden is soft on Hong Kong, Hong Kong was supposed to be an independent city state. I know there were uh, one country, two systems. That was an international agreement between the Chinese in, in the Brits, and, Ch and China completely violated that, took over, took over an independent city-state that was a democracy, I might add, that was pro-Western, and they totally rolled it over, and the United States did nothing about it. What kind of message does that sound to send to China when China is looking to take over places like Taiwan? When do we stand up to it? Is when, is when they're encroaching on Guam?